go. Sorry. Okay. Um, how about number four? Yep, sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. Everybody good with that? Okay. Now we've got an identity to verify. Now you have not yet had to do one of these for a grade. That is coming. So let's look at this one and see if you can verify that. This is not a tough one. I want you to look at it carefully. Oh my. What do you see? Oh, it's one. It's, there's a one in there. You see a sine squared and a cosine squared. And what does that make? One. So now we have one plus tangent squared. Well, that's secant squared. So you did what you were supposed to do. You showed that both sides can boil down to secant squared. That's easy. Okay, down at the bottom, number one. Tangent. Tangent. Number two. Cotangent squared. Number three. One. Number four. Negative sign. Okay? And then you, they got to verify here on this quiz. tougher problem. How do you want to start? Maybe change this tangent into sine over cosine. Now, even if you didn't wouldn't start that way, does that make sense to you? That that would be a way to start? Even if you chose not to? What about now? We need a common denominator, don't we? Right? Our common denominator will be this and this, right? That's our common denominator. So this one is going to have to be times by one plus sine. And this one is going to have to be times by cosine. Everybody okay with that? So we'll have sine plus sine squared, right? Plus cosine squared. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Here's a one, right? So now we have sine plus one over one plus sine times cosine. What happens now? What, what do you see? Yeah, these guys cancel out. I'll put this, turn this noise off. These cancel and leave me with one over cosine. Well, shoot, what's one over cosine? Seek it. they might or you thought they should have. Yes, Katie Klein. <laughs> Melanie hand up. Anybody find something you couldn't do last night? 
Now remember, in this block of problems, your job was hopefully to be able to look at it, this is problem 21, and see which formula is being used. And I always, 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 on these kinds of problems, forget the 2i and the 3x for a moment. Just leave that out for a moment. Hope I copied that right. And just look at what functions you've got. You've got tan plus tan over 1 minus tan tan. Okay, we just learned these yesterday, so you may not have that memorized yet. But certainly, if you look on your purple sheet, tan plus tan over 1 minus tan tan is one of the formulas on the sheet. What formula is that? It's the tangent. Is it a plus or a minus? It's the tangent plus formula. Now, what are the two things that are being added together in the problem? 2y and 3x. That's it. You can't do anything with that. That's the answer to the question. That's all there is to it. When answering the question where there's two numbers and there's not variables in them, do you want to say, would it be more like acceptable to answer it with the minus sign, or would you rather have it like include the actual No, if it's, if it's 20 plus 30, you yeah. should say 50. Okay. This one doesn't add together, though. All right. Anything else from the homework? All right, let's look at a couple of problems then that are going to be different problem types that are going to be in tonight's homework. Same section. Uh, we did 1 to 22 last night, so now we're going to start with the section with 23. Let's look at those problems. These are verified problems, true problems. Um, so I'll just try... Um, Yesterday. If it's sine squared, so that's 1 over 4, then it's sine squared, right? And then, or sine over 2 with the pi, and then you have to do it again. So it's just Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see what you're saying. You're trying to get a co-function identity out of that. Yeah. Um, boy, I don't know. I don't know if that would work or not. Um, don't make it harder than this. Stephen, I really don't know. I've never tried that. I have no idea if that would work or not. I'll let you work on that if you want. Yeah, this is, this is a difference of two angles. Or, yeah, the difference of two angles. We're taking the cosine of a difference. What's our formula say? Cosine of the first, cosine of the second, and I'm going to go ahead and put 45 instead of pi over 4. Are you okay with that? Pi over 4 is 45, Annabelle? So my formula says cosine, cosine. Now, this is a cosine, so it's going to be plus sine, sine. That's the formula we learned yesterday, one of them. Cosine of the first, cosine of the second, plus sine of the first, sine of the second. Now, what do you think we might do here? can't do anything with this, but what about this? Can we figure this out? Sure. 
there's my 45, 45, 90 triangle. What's the cosine of 45? What am I going to put right there? The cosine of 45? Uh, root 2 over 2. And what's the sine of 45? Root 2 over 2. Now look at what you're trying to end up with. Can I get from here to there? All I need to do is what? Divide, or not divide, factor which is kind of like division. So I'm going to factor out a root 2 over 2, and I'll be left with cosine plus sine. I would recommend on these problems that you start with this side, the side that has the summer difference, and use your formula on it, your identity, and see where it goes from there. There is one glitch. They're usually really easy, but there's one bad situation, and it's a problem <coughs> like number 24. Let's see if we can discover what the issue is. I just kind of gave you a suggestion. I said, let's start over here, right? What's our formula say? Look on your purple sheet if you don't have it memorized. It equals tangent. Tangent. Minus. Well, it be tangent x minus tangent. Can I go ahead and change that to 90? Over 1 plus tan x, tan 90. okay with that? All right. What's the next step then? Tan 90. Find tan 90. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. 90 is on an axis, isn't it? So I don't draw a triangle. I'm just going to look at that point. Okay, what are the coordinates of that point? 0, 1. What's tangent? Y over X. on the A. This is the problem. This would work out perfectly if that had been something other than 90. If that had been a 60 or a 45 or even a 180, it would have been perfect. But it's a 90. What are we going to do? Because we need a number to put in here and we're not getting one. You can't say tan x minus undefined. That is not going to get us cotangent. So what do you think? What are we going to do? Just everything by 2. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Um, the issue is you can't find the tangent of 90, right? That's the issue. So what if we didn't do tangents? What if we went back to the original problem and said, okay, this equals the sine of the angle over the cosine of the angle. Now, is that a true statement? Is that true? Can I do this? Do I have a formula for this? And I have a formula for this, right? Now, what's beautiful about the sine and the cosine? Think about it. Are they ever undefined? Do the sine and cosine have asymptotes? Are they ever undefined? No. So we are going to be able to do this problem. It's going to be more work, but we're going to be able to do it. What's my formula for the numerator? Sine x, cosine 90, minus sine 90, cosine x. Perfect. What's my formula for the denominator? Cosine 
x cosine 90 plus sine x sine 90. Harvey, she needs to pay attention. Now, can we fill in these numbers? Sure we can. We got a picture already drawn. What's the cosine of 90? Zero. So this is zero, <coughs> which means this term is effectively gone because you're multiplying by zero, so that's like gone. What's the sine of 90? Zero. Sine of 90 is not zero. No. Sine of 90 is one. Remember, sine is y, so it's one. So on top, I have negative cosine. All right, what's the cosine of 90? That's gone. That's gone, that's zero, that term's gone. What's the sine of 90? So on the bottom, I have sine x. What's cosine over sine? There it is. If, if your problem has a 90 in it, are you ever going to be able to use tangent? No. There's one other angle that would cause you problems. Do you know what it is? Besides 90, what's the one other angle? 270. If you have a 90 or a 270, you're not going to use a tangent formula because the tangent doesn't exist at these two places. It's undefined. As long as you're not at those two places, go ahead and use your tangent formula if you want. But if you just love this, could you do this with every problem? Absolutely. Every problem can be done by changing tangent and sine and cosine if that's what you want to do. Um, Another one here. I'm going to pick one of your hard homework problems and do it for you. How about that? Yeah. Number 53. Look at number 53. It says prove the identity. Okay, here we go. Who's got an idea? Diana, oh, you have an idea. Oh, don't, don't say that. You always have an idea. Well, I kind of said the earlier that when you see something that looks like this, we have formulas for that, right? So why don't we go ahead and just see what happens if we use our formulas. So what's the formula for the tangent of x plus y? If you don't have it memorized, look on your purple sheet. purple sheet there. Let's go ahead and do this one. These are times each other. So let's go ahead and do that one. What's that one? big disastrous mess we have, but it's a foil, isn't it? Aren't we taking this fraction times this fraction, so we're going to take this numerator 
times this numerator. And what happens when I FOIL those two? I'm only doing the numerators now. What happens when I FOIL them? I end up with tangent squared uh, x minus tangent squared y. Because when I FOIL, these are going to cancel. So I end up with just tangent squared minus tangent squared. How about the denominator? Do the same thing with the denominators. Isn't the same thing going to happen when you FOIL? So I'm going to have 1 minus tangent squared tangent squared. And lo and behold, we're finished. It looked very big and scary, but it surely wasn't, was it? I'll do one more of your big, bad, ugly homework problems, and then we're going to do a little practice quiz. Um, how about 47? Oh Carrie? Yep. What do you think would be a good way to start this problem? This is number four. Well, I mean, there's just, there's just so many ways I can't, like, pinpoint, like, the best way to start it. It's okay. Pinpoint a way okay, to start it. Okay, okay. Well, um, since, like, those are, like, could you, like, make that a square thing look bigger? Or is that not a thing? Okay, let's focus our beady little eyes right here. Okay, okay. What can we do with that? Um... Thing where you, uh, you can make it the, the sine uh, the, the plus the other thing. Okay, so what would it be? It would be sine x um, cosine y, and then it would be minus, and then sine x sine y plus minus oh, cosine x. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking about. That's it. So that's the formula for the sine of a difference. Now, what have we got right here, Harry? Oh, we got this the other one. Yep. So we're going to say plus, because of this plus right yeah. here, plus, okay, now what's this going to equal? Uh, that's going to be sine x and cosine y plus sine y Cosine x. Perfect. Now take a look at that for a second, and what do you notice? These are going to cancel, aren't they? So what do we end up with here? Two of those. Two of those, which is exactly what we wanted. They're, they're all easy. But you got to remember, use your identities. When you see things added or subtracted like that, use your identities. All right, you ready for a practice quiz? No. Yes. No, right now? Yes, we are. So you can do this right in your notes. You can do it right in your notes. It's not for a grade. You can skip right over that. How is it like no? No. That'd be funny, man. But it is no calculator. <coughs> so there's problem number one.
questions on your practice for us? Well, it's, it's kind of, you mean like the verifications yeah. like we just did? It's sort of like that, except I'm not telling you what you're supposed to end up with. Yeah. You're just reducing it down to something. Okay. So in a way, it's a little harder, I guess, because yeah. you don't know. But that one reduces down very nicely to something. Anybody feel comfortable with number one? Putting it up there? Even if you're not done with the others, would somebody like to share what you got? We're going to run out of time here. the formula ones. Those are kind of easy. Anybody can do those? Anybody feel good about that? Good, good, good. The last one's the hardest. So I don't know if anybody wants to tackle that one. Tim? Or Stephen, I mean. I just clicked on your tardy. I just clicked on your tardy and it says Tim. So um, that's what I was thinking. Stephen, you wanna? Can you do that last one? You don't have to. I don't want to pressure you. Stephen, 
may need a little bit more room. So let's go ahead and talk about these first two so we can erase them if we need to. Let's look at the first problem. Did everybody, thinking about yesterday, did everybody think to change 15 into something? That's the only thing we got right. So you changed it into, Maggie changed it into 60 minus 45. Did anybody change it into anything different than that? Deanna? 45 minus 30. 45 minus 30, great choice. I hope you ended up with the same answer. Now, once she changed, either way, whatever you changed it into, once you changed it, you have a formula, right, to use? So, for Maggie, it was cosine 60, cosine 45, plus sine 60, sine 45, perfect. Now, she did not need, or maybe she just did it on her paper, but she doesn't have the pictures here. Remember, for her, she's going to need the 45 picture, and she's going to need the 60 picture unless she already has these memorized, which is possible given how much we use them. So she took numbers from her pictures and plugged them in here. And that's her answer. It's beautiful. Anybody have a question about that? Steven's on a roll here, so I'm going to have to erase pretty soon. All right, let's look at number two. When you read this question, did you say to yourself, sine, cosine, minus, cosine, sine? and you looked on your purple sheet, or maybe you already have it memorized, that's a formula for the sine of angle minus angle, sine 25. How many got that one right? Good job, good job. The bottom one, tan plus tan over one minus tan tan. Again, that's a formula on your sheet. Tan 95, how many got that one right? Good. So if you had your purple sheet with you, you feel comfortable with those problems like in number two? See, that's a risky decision to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You got to risk it for the biscuit. Good work, by the way, on those. I have one more challenge problem for you, but let's wait till Steven's done here. Steven, you know where to go. Each, you took an interesting round. Don't, don't. I, I hate you. I'm going to go save that. Okay. So his, his first instinct was to change into sines and cosines. Good idea. Now, he's got, okay, he's got this fraction. Now, it is a big fraction that has little fractions in it. Let's get rid of the little fractions. So we could do that by multiplying by what? Just in the first one, right here, by sine. So put sine x, sine x. So now, on the top, all you have is, no, not on the top. These cancel, yeah, so all you're going to have on top is 1. No, not 2 sine. Just sine times sine. I'm going to write it over here. So you have 1 over sine squared. Perfect. Now, what can you do with that one? Oh, okay. He says for this one, it might be easier, since we're dividing by 1 over cosine, just to flip that. So his, he's got cosine over sine times 1 over sine, and now he's going to make that times cosine over 1. Do you see that? Kids, when you divide by 1 over cosine, that's the same as multiplying by cosine. Okay, so what happens with that mess, Stephen? What are you going to have? And there's a minus in between those two fractions, right? So it's going to be minus cosine squared over sine squared. So this is what he's got now. What do you notice? Yeah, you already have a common denominator, so you can go ahead and put them together. Oh, it's just going to be one, right? 
minus one. What's one minus five? Yeah. Yeah, one minus cosine squared is sine squared. So that big mess just reduces to one. Very nicely done. Thank you. Now, here's what I don't want to have happen. You are going to get ugly junk like this, you guys. You've got to deal with it. You can do it. It's not hard. Don't be scared. Clean up the mess. And then everything just works out famously. All right, Katie. Are we going to have test back today or tomorrow? No, because you just want to gloat, don't you, because you did no, so well. No, I, I haven't okay. looked. Oh, she told you, you yesterday. I told you yesterday. Totally Point oblivious to her. Um, that doesn't mean I did well. You you hurt. Hurt. Okay, that's not talking about. Okay. Oh. No, I'm not going to give it back until I get done with the retreat people. Yeah, so yeah, it'll be it'll be um, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, before okay. Yeah. okay. All right, they're posted though. The grades are posted. Okay. Now here's my challenge problem, and we aren't probably going to get it done. But I want you to write it down, and then we'll come back to it maybe. Good work on the practice quiz, by the way. Okay. Down. Here's the given. This is information that you are being told. This is the problem. Now, when you see this, what immediately pops into your head, or at least pops off the purple sheet at you when you see this? Um, to do the cosine formula. That would be cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Straight from the formula sheet. Heidi and Madeline, are you guys too young today? Diana, did you bring your Kleenex today? Okay, do you want to bring two tomorrow or you just wanted detention? You can. All right, we're going to pick up here tomorrow. Have a great day. Don't forget, if you want to do the Kleenex thing, you can. Stephen, will you turn me off? Yeah. I smell the stuff